I'm so honored to be here for the first time in my life. Thank you. Thank you. Pastor Bola gave me 90 minutes. One hour, 30 minutes. Starting from when I start preaching. So don't steal my time. I'm so grateful to the Lord. There are people you meet in life and every good thing in your life is cancelled. And there are people you meet and you are wondering, where have you been for God's sake? Where have you been? I want to thank God for Pastor Godman. He's gradually becoming a principal that no principality can stop. There are too many insecure men in the world. They want to eat up their wives. They won't let the woman shine. There are two major things every married man must give his wife. Space and place. Men that don't allow their wives to shine are cowards. And they're very close to the grave. So, womanhood celebrates Pastor Godman today. See what we will have missed if he didn't allow Pastor Bola to shine. Let's give that general of God a big, big, big hand. To God alone, the all the glory. We are great. Ah, you better clap very well so that you can let us do the next one. Hallelujah. I've equally noticed that pastors always marry fine, fine games. See your first lady. <laughs> She says she is following me. This one has overtaken you. This one. <laughs> After two, look at you. Thou shalt not tempt Pastor Godman. I'm honored to be speaking at this conference, Pastor B. Like I call you. You are a beautiful soul. You are a beautiful soul inside and outside. Naturally beautiful. A God chaser. A matriarch in the body of Christ. I'm so honored to be applauding you as you are in your destiny. And I do not take this privilege for granted at all. Thank you. The God that you so honor in my life will take you to your next level. And gladden your heart continually. Your space will never be vacant. In the name of Jesus. I am grateful. Thank you. Thank you. I have with me on this glorious trip. One of the women I love with my heart and honor and celebrate a woman that, does, that doesn't care who takes the credit just give the glory to God and let it be done a great 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 follower of God Pastor Titi Adeojo please celebrate this beautiful woman for me I love you and you know it's too late to do anything about it God bless you thank you so very much like you had, I am Funke Felix Adejumo, 54 year old girl. No, did I say girl? Girl. Girl. The only wife, the only wife of Felix Remy Adejumo. We've been married 33 years. And God blessed us with four biological children, many adopted children. And like you had five grandchildren and we're still counting. My daughter in love, not daughter in law, one of my daughters 
in love is with me here on this trip. She's married. She's our, she's our latest addition. She's married to our second son. And she was telling me yesterday that I went to preach somewhere. And she wanted to greet me. She didn't have a relationship with my son at that time. She just loved me. She was so into the ministry and all that. And the protocol was saying, no, you cannot go. You can't go. As she sat with me in the range yesterday, she said, let that protocol come and see me now. <laughs> Whatever you have been looking for, we start looking for you. <laughs> if it's a place where they thought you will never make it, you will overtake them. In the name of Jesus. So I call her, that's her name, but I call her. So do Lope Inyi Ogo Ati Agbara. Hallelujah. A day you will please celebrate her for me. I love you, baby girl. Welcome again. So me why is here with me? God bless you. I honor all of you that are here. Okay. My pilot, my police officer, everyone, you are blessed in the name of Jesus. In case my husband is watching, I've told him. I think there is another word I have applied to be married to him again. And so there can't be any vacancy. And um, when we get to heaven, I'm going to tell Jesus to please let my mansion be the closest to my husband's home. Don't worry, we will be holy just for me to visit him because he's the best man God created. Hallelujah. Made for more. What a powerful, powerful thing. And in the confines of the time that I have today, I want to take you on a journey that the Holy Spirit laid on my heart. As we look at that thing. And I want to read a very, very popular story. And then under the leadership of the Holy Spirit, we will move on. Matthew chapter 21, from verse number 1. I thank God for Pastor Nikki Adeyemi. She's one of my greatest mentees. God brought us together about 20 something years ago. I met Pastor Bola through Pastor Nikki. Please celebrate Pastor Nikki Adeyemi and Reverend Sam for me. Thank you. Matthew chapter number 21 from verse 1. Is the media helping me in any way? If not, that's why I brought my Bible. Matthew chapter 21. What a worship session. All those ladies, you will make every. Uh -uh. Jesus. You are too anointed. Mm. And when they drew nigh unto Jerusalem, oh, fantastic. And came to Bethphage at the Mount of Olives, then Jesus sent two disciples, saying unto them, Go into the village opposite you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Lose them and bring them to me. And if anyone says anything to you, you shall say, the Lord has need of them. And immediately he will send them. I'm going to up to verse 11. All this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet, saying, so the multitude said. No, 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 no. I'm reading up to verse 11. So verse 5 now. Thank you. God bless you. Tell the daughter of Zion, behold, your king is coming to you, lowly and sitting on a donkey. I called the foal of a donkey. So the disciples went and did as Jesus commanded them. They brought the donkey and the colt, laid their clothes on them, and set him on them. And a very great multitude spread their clothes on the road. Others cut down branches from the trees and spread them on the road. That's nine. Then the multitudes who went before and those who followed cried out, saying, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. And when he had come into Jerusalem, all the city was moved, saying, Who is this? The last verse. So the multitude said, This is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth of Galilee. May the Lord bless the reading of his word in our hearts in the name of Jesus. Five, there are many things that are important in life. Many things. But I have decided to zero my life on five major ones. The first one is God. God is the most important issue in life. You need a relationship with him. In case you are here today, you are not born again. If you are not saved, you are not safe. And 
all the indices are there that very soon the rapture will take place and we will go home. It's not an escape road, it is our welcome party. It will be my honor to lead you to Calvary today if you are not yet born again. If you are born again, it's important for you to cultivate a very dynamic spiritual life, a walk with the Lord. A spiritual life that is dynamic is not a gift, it is cultivated. You walk on it, you wake up in the morning and then you lay prostrate before the Lord or you kneel before the Lord or you stand before the Lord. You don't joke with your quiet time. You don't allow anybody to make you their trash bag with unforgiveness. You forgive people in advance. In fact, when I turned 50, I started forgiving people in advance. So five years, they say you are forgiven. Because it has been discovered that the greatest cause of cancer in women is unhappiness. And I want, if Jesus tarries, I want to see my great-grandchildren. So I won't let nobody make me feel funny with unforgiveness. So it's important for you to have a great walk with the Lord. As you walk with the Lord, you begin to find out why he created you. You begin to find out that where you are, you can be better than that. You begin to realize that there is more to you. If somebody wears a cologne or a perfume and you hug the person for a long time, it will rub off on you. It's the same thing with the Lord. When you are always in the presence of the Lord in worship, in the study of the word, in prayers, when you step out, it, it has rubbed off on you. People will feel it. Your children, your marriage, your career, your relationships, and all that. I'm not dwelling on that today, but that's the most important thing in your life. God is the most important relationship you will have. The second most important thing in life, as far as I am concerned, is you. You are very important. Don't believe the lie of the devil. When I was born 54 years ago, people gathered to cry for my father. A girl, what will she become? Today until I have sat, they can't sit. My father says to me, you are better than seven sons. Do not allow anybody to define you. Do not hand over the driver's seat of your life to anybody. Please don't. They, don't, they are not your well-wishers. And God didn't create you to waste you. So make up your mind to live your life and enjoy it. I'm going to be sharing a few things with you today. The third thing is your family. Your marriage, your family life, it's very important, very, very important. If your Christianity does not work at home, don't bother to, to export it. Do not bother. It's important for you to invest into your marriage. If you are not married, it's a different thing. But once you come into the institution of marriage, you make it work. Except your life is being threatened. I always encourage women to stay in their marriages and make it work. I've been married 33 years. I can tell you categorically that a good and a great marriage is very expensive. Very expensive. So you make up your mind to make it work. That's why it's important for you to look before you leap. Don't worry anybody because of television. Close one eye in prayer. Open the other one in watching before you choose who to marry. They say love is blind. I agree, but marriage is the eye opener. And you know marriage, the marriage institution is like the masquerade and the masquerader. So Lord, can I have my scarf? It's like the masquerade and the masquerader. The masquerade is the cloth and the masquerader is the man on the inside. Thank you. Imagine, if you're a Yoruba lady, you know what I'm talking about. Imagine a masquerader. Underneath is masquerade. In the heat of the sun, suddenly he farts. He cannot say, <coughs> please remove it, remove it, remove it, remove it. Ah! All he can do is to pray for fresh air. That is marriage. Your husband will fart many times. You cannot say, I'm going back to my father's house. Leave, leave. No. Pray, oh God, fresh air. Jehovah, fresh air. Because don't you also fart? Marriage is it. You should clap for me, sir. 
so your husband is important, your children, everything that has to do with your marriage. Your career is very important. Hear me I, and hear me very well. I owe nobody any apology. God has raised me as an apostle to women. God has raised me to let women know that they have dignity. Your father did not send you to school to be a full-time housewife. It's an attack of the devil against womanhood. You can be in the house, but please have your own. Even if it is ordinary pure water, sell something. I have an orphanage. I have an old people's home. I have a home for abused women. If you see them, my ears are full. So I needed to address women. This is becoming too bad. One young girl, she was pregnant. When I saw her, when she was brought to the home, married, I saw scars. Very beautiful, the lady. Why? The man used hot rod to beat her in pregnancy because she refused to sleep with another man so they could have money in pregnancy. One woman said, the husband would tell her, Nadan dear, you idiot, you goat. Close your eyes and raise your two hands. And for 15 minutes, she will be in that position. After some time, the man will say, Stand up, go to the kitchen, get me something to eat and clean up. I'll meet you in the bedroom. So, our counselors asked her, Why did you stay in that abusive relationship? She said, I don't have my own. I cannot rent a house. I can't, I can't send children to school. That is why I am leading a vanguard. Every woman must do something with her life. Stop disgracing womanhood. If your husband says, can I have one million naira or ten thousand naira or five thousand, don't say you want to kill me. You are disgracing us. Tell him, when do you need it? Even if you don't have it, we walk by faith. Don't say you want to kill me. Kill you. You demean us. Tell him, when do you need it? The man was like, I say, you? He said, yes, new level me. It's an attack, particularly in the African culture, against womanhood. And I know what I'm talking about. Do something meaningful with your, with your life. You don't have a PhD and a master's degree to be sitting down at home. Your child is autistic. I, I empathize with you. But from house, do something on the internet. Be an event planner. Let 200 naira come in your name. Your name. That's my point. And it is scriptural. In the book of Esther chapter 2, they gave her her own. Stretch your two hands. May God give you your own. What is one million in the context of the Nigerian society that we have today? It cannot even get you a car and get you a good school for your kids. Ah, uh-uh. what are we talking about? May Jehovah give you your own. The God that did it for me and took me from the bad side of life, He will give you your own. If you believe it, shout a bigger amen. Your career is important. Do something with your life. There may be a season where you have to take time off work or you are in the house or do something with your life. And the last one that I think is your relationship. I'm not talking about all this today. As we look at this story in the book of Matthew that we just read, the Holy Ghost opened my eyes to see that you are made for more. Let's go on this journey. The Bible says that Jesus Christ sent two disciples to go and loose the cult and the ass. And I was asking myself, why didn't he send three? Why didn't he send two? Beg your pardon, one. Why three? Every scripture has the surface meaning and then the deep structure meaning. I think the Lord was trying to pass a message across to us that everybody needs two levels of relationship. The vertical and the horizontal. You need it if you are going to experience the more that God has for you 
your vertical relationship. That talks about you and God and everyone that is your senior. And then the horizontal relationship, that talks about you and fellow human beings and all that. Let me quickly chip something in here. Life has been designed in such a way that every one of us, we were created to be free but not independent. You need people. You need relationships. You need connections. You are a Mary that is pregnant with a heavy duty vision. You need an Elizabeth. Someone that is equally pregnant. Someone that knows what it means to experience morning sickness. Someone that is not jealous. Beware of these three kinds of people. Number one, expired mentors. They are always jealous of you. You can't do it. We tried it before. Hey, is it because your husband God is using you now? Is it because your husband is big now? That's why, that's why. Expired mentors, watch out for them. Watch out for jealous colleagues. I don't have the time to be explaining all that. And watch out for parasitic proteges. Name droppers. Be careful. Because God will be sending people your way. When you look at life from the cradle to the grave, you will discover that you need people. When you were going to be born, it took a man and a woman to produce you. After you were conceived, it took a woman to take care of you. You changed her posture, you changed everything about her, but it didn't matter to her just to give you life. The first meal you had, you couldn't feed yourself. The education you have today has taken people to put it into you. You cannot be your own driver, your own lawyer, your own um, medical doctor, your own hairstylist, your own seamstress, your own everything. You need people. And when your days on earth are over and you are 100 years old and you go home to be with the Lord, you cannot put yourself in the casket. And even if you do, you cannot close it. And even if you close it, you cannot put yourself in the grave. And if you do, you cannot use sand to cover yourself. So you see, from the beginning, from your conception till you go to see the Lord, you need people. My prayer for you is that you will not be surrounded by people that are irrelevant to your destiny. In the name of Jesus. The book of Acts chapter number 3, two people had to help that man, Peter and John. Silver and gold we do not have. For such as we have, we give unto you. In the name of Jesus, rise up. Take care of the horizontal relationship and take care of the vertical relationship in your life. I don't want to dwell too much on this because I'm going somewhere very, very quickly today. Take care of the spiritual relationships in your life. Take care of your pastor. Now let me tell you something. Everything that the Bible represents is being attacked online. Titan. It's an attack of the devil to diminish Christianity. And it's a lie. One man in China said, in 100 years time, there will be no Bible in the world. 100 years after, his house became a printing press for the Bible. You can't fight against God. It was God that instituted Titan. You see all kinds of rubbish. Don't join them, we just pass. The institution of marriage has been attacked in the Bible. Just have a baby mama. He doesn't need to be married. When the Bible says marriage is honorable and the bed undefined, all mongers and adulterers, God will judge. Don't join them. Don't join them. They use their mouth and their pen to talk about men of God and say all sorts of things. Just pass. Because their suffering is loading. Just pass. Anything that attacks the word of God, don't put your head there. As long as it is the word of God. Take care of the spiritual people that God has placed on your life. Every opportunity you have to bless a man or a woman of God, please do. Take care of your pastor. Take care of your pastor's wife. Take care of, you know, some of you have heard me say this. I've, I've written, by God's grace, 77 books. And my favorite book is titled, I Am the Pastor's Wife. In that book, there are just four chapters. Chapter one, dear God. Chapter two, dear, my dear husband. Chapter three, dear me. Chapter 4, they are congregation members. And in that chapter 4, I said, your grandma may be better, but you are not the pastor's wife, I'm the pastor's wife. God saw you like that, he didn't choose you. Your background may be better than my own, it doesn't matter. That's one a story. 
Maybe we even went to the same secondary school. Does it matter? We may be age mates. We are not grace mates. God chose me. And I said in that book, you better treat me well as your pastor's wife. All this, pastor, we thank God for you, sir. God bless you, sir. You are the light of our time. And then you see your pastor's wife, bless you. I said, because I've made up my mind to live my life in such a way that if you don't hear me on radio, you will watch me on TV. If you don't watch me on TV, you will read my books. If you don't read my books, you will smell my perfume. I've made up my mind. Take care of the spiritual people in your life. It is very rewarding. I never knew all my life that I would be a pastor's wife. As I look back, I say, wow. Thank God I treated my pastor's wife very well. I'm reaping it. Because life is not governed by miracles. It is governed by principles. If you don't sow it, you cannot reap it. Let's run. The Bible talks about the ass and the goat. The ass is the mother. And the goat is the child. And the Bible tells me that they were tied down. As we jump, we see that this particular cult was created to carry the Lord Jesus Christ. But only God knows for how long it was tied down. And that may be the pictorial image of some people. That's why God laid it on the heart of your, your mama to say that, look, you were made for more. This ass was there day in day out year in year out when she was born god had it at the back of his mind that one day this particular ass will have honor this ass will bring jesus christ to jerusalem this ass will experience greatness but it was tied down tied there and while it was there maybe heaven was looking at Ha! And saying, you you were made for more. This is not where you should be. This is not what I created you to be. But it was there. It wasn't just there all by herself. She was there with her child. Let's get deeper. Every child that was born in Egypt, even though it was a Jew, was a slave. There are people whose lives will have been better who will have moved faster? Who will have gone further? Who will have gone forward? But they are tied down. And heaven is crying. You were made for more. This is not all about you. There is something about you. What are the indices? How do you know you are tied down? Number one, when your mates leave you behind. When you notice that your mates are leaving you behind. In marriage, in career, in finances, in many things. While the ass was there, the ass saw the mates moving, going around. But it was there, just looking. He saw what he liked. Whatever pronoun I use for that ass, don't see whether whether he or she or it, you know. Saw what he liked. She liked in the lives of the people. Her mates were all and everywhere. She couldn't move. They were wearing what she wanted. She couldn't afford it. They went to the same secondary school together. And now they are big there. My husband went to the University of Ibadan. He was telling me recently, and these are the people I know, two of his mates, one of them is the VC of a very big university in Nigeria today. The other one is a security man in that same university. My husband is a pastor. Delay in achievement is another one. Number one, when your mates leave you behind and you are wondering, but I thought I was made for more. These are the signs. Delay in achievement. When the devil allows you, you know, the devil does three things to people's destiny. He delays, he diverts, and then he destroys. 
He knows that you should have been there. So he comes around and then for five years you are writing jam. This may be your child. The, the point is not the jam. The point is the delay for the future. And then after jam, to gain admission, he says, it's cut off. It's, so, you know, something, it's something. It's something. Another three years. When a person doesn't get married until he or she is 40 something. It's a delay. Deliberate delay by the devil. So that by the time she gives birth to her children, maybe she's 70 something already before the child can now take care of her. And then the child puts her in the Mercedes and says, please switch off the AC. Oh, I don't want. Because you don't know what it is. May you make it on time. May your children make it on time. It's a serious prayer I have just prayed for you. Delay in achievement is a terrible thing. Number three, how do you know that you are tied down? It's what I call disfavor. Nothing comes so easy. That's your song. My husband says favor means to be served first, even though you, it won't go around. Favor. I refer to this as the partial partiality of God. When God just decides to favor you, it's not because you know how to pray. It's not because you know how to fast. It's not because you know how to do it. But God just randomly selects you. He opens his eyes. He notices it is you. He says, it's you I chose. And, but I'm not a man. I'm not a man. Numbers 23, 19. What will I do? Let me just repackage you and make you look like it. How can you explain it for God to be saying, I see no iniquity in Jacob. Which Jacob? Jacob that was sinning from his mother's womb. That's favor. May God favor you. When you are favored, your mistakes look like miracles. When you are in disfavor, your mistakes are amplified. The dog that used to wag its tail when it sees you begins to bark at you. Your husband that used to pamper you and all that, something just happens. Your boss that used to be very friendly. Something just happens. Today is the name that is above every name. Wherever disfavor is looming and disturbing your life. In the name of Jesus, I destroy it. You will get to where you are going. In the mighty name of Jesus. The ass was tied down. And the maids were going. I can go on and on and on and on. Sometimes it is because an ancient voice is speaking. Now please listen to me. I'm not a deliverance minister. I thank God for them. But that's not my calling. Come out. Don't come out. What's your name? Jagoba. Come out. Mm -mm. That's not me. It's not my area. Some people are called for that. And we thank God for them. Because life issues are very real. But please listen to me, beloved. I have enough, oh thank you, God bless you. I have enough spiritual sense to know that spiritual warfare is real. Many years ago, shortly before our wedding, I had to take my fiance to the village. And when we got home, he went with his friend and I went with my junior sister. It was time for us to sleep. And I used to have this aunt. Don't look at me funny because we are all Africans. This aunt of my grand aunt of mine was a first class witch. Four of her children and grandchildren had died. In fact, my cousin, this was bad. An accident, a mutual accident, opened her skull. We grew up together. How do I know? The moment Mama is preparing to die, one of the children or grandchildren would die, and then Mama would just resurrect. In fact, this last time, we had bought her casket and her grave clothes. When my cousin was involved in that accident, and she died. And mama came up again. So we knew something was wrong, was wrong the fourth time. I was newly born again. I was six years old in the Lord. So it was time to sleep. And my uncle said, Funke, you are going to sleep in this room. Hey! Because we were not married, I couldn't sleep with my husband. So he slept with his brother, with his friend. And I had to sleep in mama's room. I quickly ran into that room. I pleaded the blood of Jesus, blah, blah, blah. You know the kind of prayer when you, when you say, Cockroach, Jesus, save me, Jesus, save me. It was that kind of prayer. There were two beds there. Mama's bed and then my bed. So I went out. By the time we came back, Mama was asleep, quote and unquote, and she was, she was facing the wall. My sister had slept. I knelt down beside the bed. I prayed. Then I slept facing Mama just in case. <laughs> Suddenly, 
I slept off. Thank God for he that keepeth watch over Israel. That does not sleep or slumber. I slept off. Made for more. Listen. Then I had a terrible nightmare. I saw someone, a man, pursuing me with a knife. And at a point he was tired, I was tired. If it were to be now, me run from you. I will eat you in the dream. I will see blood in my mouth when I wake up. As a lion is a lion, whether I wake or I sleep. <laughs> he said, Funka, I will not kill you. I've only been told to touch your blood with this knife. I said, in the name of Jesus, then I woke up. The dream did not scare me as much as what I saw after I woke up. What did I see? I saw Mama, she was awake, sitting down at the edge of the bed, her palm on her chin, watching me as I was dreaming. So I was supposed to be the next. That was July. We got married September 8, 1984. She died in August. When power meets power, the lesser power bounds. Spiritual warfare is real. Ancient voices, I'll prove it to you in the scriptures. In the book of Jeremiah chapter 35, talking about the Rechabites. God said to Jeremiah, call the children of Rechabites. Tell them to come and eat and drink wine. This, hear what they said. Our father said we should not drink wine. Our father said we should not build houses. Our father said we should, we, our children, and anybody that makes the mistake of getting married into our family, we should live in tents. It's here in Jeremiah chapter 35. I don't have the time to be reading it to you. Ancient voice was speaking. There are ancient voices that speak against people. You cannot just say, I'm born again, and that's all. Because the covenants were consciously cut on your behalf, you too must consciously denounce those covenants. There are families where their firstborn does not get married until it's 37. There are families where their daughters don't stay in their husband's homes. There are families where it is the wife that feeds the man. Ancient voices. Maybe one hunter needed a miracle and said, if you can just give me that animal, every first daughter. When Abraham was cutting the covenant, Isaac was in his loins. So you were in the loins of that man. You must consciously denounce it. Every ancient voice. One, one woman said some terrible things and I just shook my head this morning. Because she didn't like him, a, a, a servant of God. She said, all my life, my children will never meet this person. Ah! This anointed person who knows maybe there is something that God has in mind for her children. She has left a voice. In case you don't understand what I'm saying. I read a book about Michelle Obama many years ago when she was in high school. She had to share a room with a white girl. After some weeks, the girl's mother came and told the school authority, my daughter cannot sleep in the same room with a black girl. So Michelle was relocated. When she became the first lady of America. Oh my God, I love that lady. It's only in Nigeria they don't prepare people for first ladyship. Your stomach is like this and you are a first lady. First lady. I don't have time. Prepare because you don't know where you will go. Prepare. All this is in Pandediam at 11 p.m. with bottle of mud. So carry yourself is a problem. You have to be like this. I have jumped how many times this morning? Before I bath, I must jump minimum of 400 times every day. If I, so when we are praising the Lord, you cannot jump. Hey, hey, Oluwa. Hey, hey, hey. I can't jump. You must be fit. You must be smart. Who knows where your husband will be one day? After Michelle became the first lady, trust journalists, they located that woman. She said, that is the greatest regret of my life. Maybe her daughter will have been Michelle's best friend. Every ancient voice speaking against you. In the name of Jesus, I destroy it. It will not affect your children. It will not affect your destiny. I take advantage of the blood of the Lamb and I silence that voice in the name of Jesus. You will get to your destination. In the mighty name of Jesus. I 
have to leave that aspect of the message and go to reasons why some people don't enter into their destiny. A major thing is the tongue of men. Tongue of men. The zebras of life. May your enemy not get to your helper before you. If Pastor B wants to help Pastor Titi, and Pastor B talks to me and says, Ma, I feel led to help Pastor Titi with um, $25 million. Pastor Titi, you better claim it. And you know, Pastor B, for you to be able to give $25 million, you know what it means. I beg, I'm here. And I said to Pastor B, mm, <clears throat> Okay. I've not spoken much, but I've spoken. And if God's plan was for that 25 million to be for something that will make her to realize that she's made for more and she can do something, I have interrupted. And there are people that will have got into their destinies, but somebody has said something. They went to marry her. Mm, mm, just mm, is enough. Stand up. Any word that has been spoken against you and that is the reason why you are not moving forward any spoken or written word every evil thought today I demolish it in the name of Jesus by the power that raised Jesus from the dead you will get to your destination in the mighty name of Jesus and the only ghost is just scattering my message because I had it all lined up but somehow, somehow, no problems let me just follow him some of you, you are in wrong relationships relationships that carry ill luck and you are following them, some of you, you have too many friends and you don't even know that you are working with your enemy one of my fathers in the Lord that Bishop Bessing has said to my husband and me, one of his passing statements don't be so trusting to be careless. With some of you, you trust people too much. And the plan of God for your life is heavy. The Chinese proverb says, better walk alone than walk with the wrong people. May God delete from your life anyone that shouldn't follow you to the next level. Because you were made for more, take care of these things. Number one, your self-esteem must be very healthy. Don't hand over the driver's seat of your life to anybody. Don't be proud, but please don't be timid. Be bold. Shyness is not a gift of the Spirit. Timidity is not a fruit of the Spirit. Be bold. The Bible says the righteous is as bold as the lion. Be bold. Don't let anybody intimidate you. We live in a society where the woman is only to be seen, that is if she says, but never heard. So when a woman says something, I thank God for the daughters of Zelophehad. When a woman says something, there is a problem. Because it's an African nation. Your self-esteem is important. Invest into yourself. I make bold to say this, that I went back for my first degree after four children. I had NCE and I just looked at my husband's life, he was rising. So I said to myself, a day will come when I will no longer fit the front of this man's car. So I went back to school and I came back, he came out leading the class. I'm a master's uh, student now for two, two master's students, Lord help me. Uh, it's, been, it's been hectic. But what am I saying? Invest into yourself, like yourself, wake up in the morning, look at the mirror and say, God, you tried. Once in a while, go to the salon. Carry a magazine, not book of Habakkuk. <laughs> Let them do pedicure for you. Just relax. Let them give you a massage. I was in Dubai some time ago on my way to the US. They put me in the bathtub filled with seaweed for 45 minutes. I thought I was in heaven. Kaya <laughs> All the pains. Women, a man was created because he was wanted. You were created because you were needed. So you always, always meet needs. Pass and take care of yourself. 
Take care of yourself. Like yourself. Love yourself. Some of you, the only problem you have is the problem of scarf. Everywhere you go, you must tie scarf. Or berets. Your husband is making love to you. My scarf. Oh, scarf. I see there is scarf in heaven. At 37, you look 67. He said, who is looking at me after four children? Take care of yourself and invest into yourself. There's nothing wrong with compact powder. Don't just use a luba, the white one. If you don't wear jewelry, make it up. Tie a little scarf on your neck. You know? Put even ordinary rub. If you will not use this red one, listen. You dress as a married woman to please only three people. God. Let God be pleased no matter who is offended. Your husband, yourself. Every other person is a noise of the market. Noise of the market. Take care of yourself. Hey, who? My husband committed adultery. Listen. When they come around to tell me that, Mommy, see what my husband did. He slept with somebody. I say, cry. I say, can't catch him. Cry, cry, cry. Are you done? And I said to her, You are alive. Your husband committed adultery. If you die, he will marry the woman. So stay alive. Is it because people are not telling you their stories? A lot is going on. The rich are also crying. How must you kill yourself because one stupid girl slept with your husband? Don't ever go and fight with the woman. In fact, you should top up your dressing and make sure you walk in a way that she will see you and let her know you are not bothered. Ajay Kumilo, Jay, you are not bothered. If you didn't understand what I said, I just spoke in tongues. Spoke in tongues. What am I saying? Don't kill yourself because something is wrong with your marriage. Don't kill yourself because somebody does not like you. You greeted them. They didn't answer you well. Keep your greeting. Greet yourself. Greet yourself. Don't kill yourself because they did not answer. You say, eh, it's because they don't like me. You say, you say, I want to carry designer. Is it, is it human hair that is in Gucci bag? Carry your own bag too. Bag is bag. When it was, it was created by Lamidia Jaji, it doesn't matter. Bag is bag. Bag is bag. Don't kill yourself because of bag. Like yourself. Pastor Bala said all the ladies in church were wearing red or turquoise. And you don't have. It's green, you have. Wear your green. Let your praise worship be heavy that day. I'm not trying to disobey you, but I don't have it. You don't need to go and be borrowing for no reason. I am here today to say you are made for more. Don't let mundane things kill you. Choose to be happy. When last did you go to see a movie? Wedding party? Or one of those movies? Sometimes I'll just say, where is Baba One day, please load it up. Load it, load it for me. African magic. With Bolly in my hand. Because the things that can kill you, there are plenty. <laughs> Women, the, life just hates us. There are people that are not happy that you are happy. So embarrass them and disappoint them. Can you cross your leg and, and pull your dress? Down? Tell your neighbor, I won't let you choke me. I am more than what you are looking at. Really, I've not really started preaching, honestly. I'm just introducing to you, and I was so close. The other thing that you need to take care of is what I call clinging relationships. Some of you, your life, your life cling too much to people. So when that person shows you a little disaffection, you are finished. And it's affecting a lot of ladies. You are more than this. You have more on your inside. Stop this clinging relationship. Let people know your value. Let them know your value. 
I tell ladies, it is not every woman that a man can slap. When the man raises his hands and he remembers who you are, he will just say, uh, you see, don't let the devil be troubling all this. I had a joke some time ago. Somebody sent it to me on WhatsApp or something. This man came out and said, you are packing out of this house today. Go inside now and pack all your clothes. Then the lady's phone rang. It was the, the girl's father. She put it on speaker. Hello, Bala. I just wanted to know that I just transferred $200,000 to your account. Give $50,000 to your husband. Give $100,000 to, you know, to your children. And then you two keep. So when she was done, she said, okay, daddy, thank you again. And she, so what were you saying? The man said, I said, you should go inside, pack your clothes and give me a want to wash. To wash them. Somebody shouts, I'm blessed. It is not every wife that the man can say, you must pack out. Because the man knows if you pack out, the curtains are going. The fridge is going. Everything is going. I know you cannot pack. May the Lord bless you. I want to try and go back to this story as I close. Because now I know, please, now I know the Holy Ghost has overtaken my notes. I have so much here. I notice that the Lord is just so He knows your needs because I have prayed. The Bible says that Jesus told them that go bring those two animals. When you get there, people will talk or reply them. Truly, truly, they got there and people say, Why, why? And there are some of you, you are made for more. But because you don't want people to talk, that's why you are scared. Many years ago, I live in Ondo State, even though I'm not from Ondo State. The state government invited me to come and preach to prisoners. I returned from that experience a totally changed woman. In fact, that was where my worship line took a leap. When I noticed the way those prisoners were praising the Lord. Amazing. I saw one. It would be about my father's age. He could not even stand up. He was there, but he was still praising the Lord. As long as there is life, there is hope. They took me around and then I saw a particular set and the man told me look at those in this place some of them have not stepped out of that room since 1988 that was the day I understood very well that freedom is a blessing I said Christians need to come to this place once in a while you will stop complaining that you don't have a black shoe because some don't even have legs and then the second thing that happened to me on that trip had to do with my destiny. I noticed that each prisoner had two sets of numbers on his, it was a male prison, on his uniform. A, a smaller one in the front and a bigger one, a bolder one at the back. So I asked questions and I was told that this tiny one is their serial number. Your number 340 in this prison. Your number 108. But the one at the back is their dates of discharge. 2055 2073 so you know many of them will die there and as I was in tears the Holy Ghost spoke to my heart and said the way this prison has carried their numbers everywhere is the way every person carries his or her destiny and assignments around but a lot of people are supervisors who is wearing jewelry who is wearing jeans who is wearing that who is that? supervising and they are not fulfilling their own destiny. You, if you want to get to your destination, you don't need to stop to throw stone at every dog that barks. You don't need to be explaining. Just face front. I just be going. And the Lord said to me that day, when you were born, you were born naked but not empty. So you have a destiny on your inside. You are more than somebody that somebody just sleeps with to have a child. That child in your hand is a destiny. Please hear me. You are made for more. You were planned to be a profitable daughter. To your biological parents, to your spiritual parents, to anyone that cares about you. My father said to me, Olufunke, God used you to snatch the bread of affliction from my mouth. 
you are a worthy daughter. You must be a profitable daughter. Some of you are in Lagos and your parents are languishing in the village. Some of you, it's your parents' in-law. My time, you were made for more than this. Not just to, to go in the morning at, at five and, re, and, and return at nine. There's more to you. And some of you, God might be telling you to start something alongside your career. Do something with your life. Package something. Ashwebi or uh, Wigo and uh, something. Do something to earn extra income. Don't begin to kill 17 cows after your parents are dead. When you didn't take care of them while they are alive. You must be a profitable daughter. Number two, you must be an extraordinary woman. That is what it means to be made for more. Your life shouldn't just end anyhow. I made up my mind years ago that I will not die as a woman. I will die as an institution. After I'm gone, you still be doing research about my life. That is what it should be. Everybody that comes across you should thank God. Who will go to bed tonight thanking God for you? You know, some years ago, my husband was almost involved in an accident, a motor accident. He was going to preach. And God averted it. So we had a Thanksgiving service. I carried my offering as I was dancing to the front. About six widows just surrounded me and said, Ma, you cannot join our club now. Who will pay our children's school fees? We pray for you too much. Your husband cannot die. I have about 147 of them on my road. Who will go to bed thanking God for you? My driver is here. He said to me some time ago, he said, Mommy, I just want to say something. He adjusted the mirror. He said, even if you wake up and you don't pray, the prayers of lepers in this land is enough for you. Even the quills over, I take care of it, lepers. The, their leader is about 80 something. I change his wheelchair every two years. He can hardly see. He said, you are the reason why I'm going to heaven. You are the reason why I have a home. Who will go to bed thanking God for you? Mother and I are building a very big hospital, gigantic. That's why we've not been able to finish it. It's heavy. In Osho State. That's where he comes from. And our plan is to so much subsidize it. So much subsidize it. When I notice that the hospital, the construction is a bit dragging. Shola, you've been with us at Christmas, so you know what I'm talking about. You know what I began to do now recently? I, I raised a team and I will go to hospitals looking for child patients that cannot afford their hospital bills. Sometimes ordinary 7,000. The first one I did, it was 7,000 that brought her back to, from coma. 7,000 naira. Who will go to bed? Madam, you are made more. You have, you have more. There is more to you. You were made for more. As you breastfeed that your baby, who knows maybe that is the president of ICANN in your hand? Who knows maybe that's the president of America? Who will ever have said that? A Kenyan. So prophesy. It's not just a baby you are carrying. In this season, I want the spirit of this, of this theme to follow you everywhere. If anybody wants to be funny, just tell yourself, I've made some more. I'm not in your level. I can't be replying you. I have too much to do. Silence can kill some people. You don't need to explain anything. Just keep replying them with more success because bad biters are at the back. So give them more success. Just continue. Just live your life. So please. You must be an award-winning wife. If you are married, your husband should be thanking God for you. My husband said he wants our mansions to be together. He even said to me, he said, when Jesus comes, I will tell him, can you please let us remain married? When God called him, I told God, I didn't want to be a pastor's wife. I don't want to tell you all the drama. But eventually when I became convinced, I said to God in the place of prayers, Father, I will so much stand by Felix Adejumo. If he fails, hold me responsible. Your husband's life must be better. You were not married or you are not married just to be married. Have sex. Any idiot can have sex. I run an orphanage. Mad women have sex. They have children. So I know what I'm talking about. Life is more than sex and having babies. The generation of your children will either bless you or curse you. So what are you doing? Do something meaningful with your life. Make up your mind. Dear to be different. 
they will be, you will be criticized, but it doesn't matter. Just choose. It's a choice. Be an award winning. Spice up your marriage. Satisfy your husband sexually. Don't wait till your husband says he will need sex before you have sex in your marriage. Send him codes. Can we have a flight to Jerusalem when you return? Most times we don't teach this in church, but it's a, it's a huge problem in marriages. And some of you is only one style, missionary style. Are you done? Every time you are under. When the Bible says that shall be above only. After this conference. Change your address. Make your husband happy. Once in a while, put a little fish in your mouth from the kitchen. Tiptoe. Get to his back. Just tickle him. When he does that, he says, you are not a virgin. And put the little fish in his mouth while he's watching Baka and Asna. Asna, I love Ghana. Be happy. Be an award-winning wife. And be a celebrated mother. Your children rise up and call you blessed. When I'm praying for my children, you will think I'm a mad woman. Refuse to be ordinary. Make up your mind. It's important. As I close, I go back to this story. The Bible says that when the earth and the courts were loosed, and taken to Jesus. Pastor Bola, please come. Can I have one or two more scarves? See what happened. Thank you. When the ass was brought to Jesus, see what happened. Wait for more. The Bible says that Jesus rode on the ass and the ass was walking on the dresses of human beings. What her great grandfather never experienced what her mates never enjoyed. In fact, some asses that went before human beings now put dresses, palm fronts on the floor, and this latest arrival was waving. Ah, God came late, but he came big. <laughs> You left me behind. You thought I would never be married. You left me behind. You thought I would never have a child. You didn't know that I was meant for more. You thought it was over for me. See the honor. See what God has drawn with my life. Come and join me. Sing hallelujah now. Can't you see what Jehovah has done? Ah. We bring me a deal in the night. But joy coming in the morning. When they left that ass while he was there, they were laughing at him, laughing and laughing. They did not know that that ass was made for. They did not know that God was hiding the last card. They did not know that there was a joke. See the honor. See the grace. What his parents never enjoyed because he carried Jesus. Therefore, if you will last, continue to carry Jesus. Don't be psychedelic when they are praising Jesus. Wet your makeup. Kneel down if you can. Prostrate if you can. This is where we get our honor from. I had a United Nations nomination recently. And I remember, thank you. And I remember how I used to hawk to pay school fees. 
Even as a head girl, for two weeks, I will not be able to go to school because of less than one dollar. I have lost count of how many children I'm paying their school fees as I stand before you today. Walking in honor because I'm carrying Jesus. Can you just look at that picture? Some of you have been delayed. I'm here today as a spiritual timekeeper to tell you that you were made for more. And in the name of Jesus, you will get there. I agree today with God's handmaiden that the Lord used to convene this meeting. And I decree that whatever has been militating against your rising is destroyed in the name of Jesus. You will get there. You will have that baby. You will have that appointment. That visa will be granted. You will build that house. God will do you good. Your mate left you behind and they thought it was over for you. But very soon you are going to sing. I'm standing here because God made a way. There's any woman here today who is going through some stuff in your marriage, over your children, over your health. Raise your right hand to heaven as we join our faith. We are praying for you. Some people are trying to get your inheritance from you. Today we stand upon this altar as once called and appointed by God. And we decree in the name of Jesus that there will be confusion in their camp. There shall be restoration. Everything you lost, God will bring back to you. You are here, you are supposed to be married. And the devil is delaying and diverting your destiny and everything that has to do with you. Today we break the backbone of delay in the name of Jesus. Oh, it is your child. I decree that this Christmas you will sing for joy. issue. When spiritual science is speaking, medical science must shut up. I turn it around for good in the name of Jesus. Every widow or single parent struggling, separated, in the name of Jesus I decree that God will give you your own joy. Your children will turn out well. Whatever is your heart desire here today, may the God that called us answer. Amen. Is there any lady here or anybody here? You want to reconcile with the Lord? You want to be born again, or you 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 were born again, but you backslid because of challenges. As you put your right hand on your chest today, I ask that the yoke of sin be destroyed in your life. And when Jesus comes, you will be a part of the wedding gift. The honor that God intended when he made you, you will have it. You are blessed. In the name of God the Father, in the name of God the Son, in the name of God the Holy Spirit. The Lord just spoke to my heart and I want to say this. There's a lady here. The devil uses your past against you. God said, I should tell you, stop repenting because I can't even remember the sin. I said something recently and I want to repeat it. When God forgives you, he puts your sin, he dumps your sin, he deposits your sin in the ocean of forgetfulness and he puts a signpost there, no fishing. No fishing. Stop fishing. I see you in the front. You are blessed 